Yo, what's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. The name is Frosty. The Snowman. But for this video, you can call me Coach because I'm going to be sharing my settings and letting you know what settings to run and the purpose as to why I make certain options when it comes to playing Destiny 2. So my goal is to share with you my sensitivity, video settings, and maybe at the end, I'll share some real life settings that you should be applying. Before we continue with the gameplay, we're going to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt is a free to play battle royale game developed and published by Shark Mob. This game is based on a tabletop role playing Vampire the Masquerade game and is part of a larger world of darkness series. Look, I know battle royale can be quite complicated to get into and learn the gameplay, which is why they introduced the new explosive 8v8 game mode where teams consist of four duels fighting over five areas on different sections based on the Prague map. This team deathmatch mode is great to get familiar with the deep gameplay that Blood Hunt offers without having to deal with all the negatives that the Battle Royale mode comes with. On top of this, they got the Summer Pass. This is basically a new battle pass that comes with over 100 items with a lower price point. Basically, it's to give you more things to grind for during your summer gaming needs. Some of the final things I wanted to mention that I'm pretty excited excited about include the content creator program which anybody can easily apply to on their website they have a discord where the shark mob crew is available 24 7 and lastly they're constantly making improvements to the gamepad for anybody that loves playing on a controller with their ps5 to finish it off vampire the masquerade blood hunt is free to play available on both pc and ps5 let's get back into the gameplay the first thing I want to talk about is the look sensitivity and my ADS sensitivity modifier. Now, over the years, I've changed from eight to lower sensitivities like five, but there's one thing that stays consistent that I want to start this conversation off with because most people don't know it even exists, and that is the sensitivity behind the sensitivity. <laughs> So DPI can come in whatever number you want it to be. It could be 400, 800, 2000. Most uh, mouse come already programmed with their own DPI. And the one that I usually always go for is 800. So why is that important? It's because it will allow you to stay consistent uh, throughout other games. And whenever you look at somebody else like a content creator, you understand why their sensitivity makes sense at the level they're at. So just because somebody is running like a sensitivity of four doesn't mean that they're actually playing at a lower sense than somebody like me. They could just be running a 400 DPI, which means it's slower than 800. Now, my personal recommendation is just run 800 or 400. But for the sake of this video, since it's my sensitivity, let's go with 800. Now, I like using 8 sensitivity during this time because Destiny 2 is a pretty fast paced game. People are jumping, sliding everywhere. And to be honest, it's not a very competitive game. Like it's not an eSport. It's not that serious. So I raise my sensitivity so that I can play a little bit more casual and chill without having to throw my arm across the table to do a flick or to track somebody in the current match. In the past, I used to run five cents and I found that I was a little bit more accurate, but it required a lot more effort and I felt that the exhaustion would hit me a little bit faster. That's why a higher sense is pretty nice for Destiny because not only does it let you keep up with the pace of the game, but it also lets you just be a little bit more chill and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be worse at the game in terms of accuracy. But I will say it does give you some benefits if it's a slower sense. And that is one thing that a lot of people can of uh misunderstand is that lower sense does not always mean your shot's going to be more on point if you make the mistake of dropping your sensitivity too low you will find situations where your aim is actually worse than it would be at a really high sensitivity now when it comes to playing other games like valorant or apex legends you may be interested in running a lower sensitivity as those games you will feel like you want to be a lot more accurate and make sure that your aim is a lot less shaky next up is the ads sensitivity modifier i feel like it's default to just run 1.0 careful turning it down or getting it too high as it will affect your primary shot and you want to keep this consistent across any game that you play but 1.0 is the sweet spot now in game i want to give you 
a little bit of an insight as to why sensitivity is so important and what it really does when it comes to playing the game so as a mouse and keyboard player sensitivity can help me look a little bit more flashy like usually like this will just throw you off the way that i'm flicking left and right does it mean that i don't have control over my aim not at all what i have here like how i can keep up with these types of like movements is just called muscle memory once you find a sensitivity that you have confidence in, you have to believe in it and give it some time to build some muscle memory. Because as you can see on my arm, as I'm holding the mouse, I can build muscle memory to flick enough to where I can aim somewhere to my left side on the opening of the cave, right? And then I build the muscle memory to also be able to flick back to where I originally was pre-aiming. More or less, it isn't going to be perfect, but over time, you will start to develop those muscle memories with the given sensitivity. Now, usually for a rule of thumb, whenever I'm choosing my sensitivities and like on whenever I'm playing other games, making sure that whenever I'm pre-aim, it's not too difficult to track my opponents if they're running across the screen or you know, making sure my aim is pretty, pretty accurate at a far distance. Like for example, see that little edge there on that pillar. I wanna make sure that whenever I'm trying to like control my mouse left and right, that I'm not just like completely going across the screen, you know, on a little bit of a nudge on the mouse. And that would just give you an idea of where to start looking for, okay? Again, whenever I ADS, I wanna be able to move my arm you know slightly around to be able to track opponents and for pretty aggressive trackings like i want to do a 180 then i should be able to do like a 360 with one swipe and as you can see my mouse pad is a triple xl glorious mouse pad i like this one a lot not sponsored and i have a lot of space here to play with so a lot of people run like a square mouse pad which is okay but if you really want to up your game your comfort and make sure that you know you can utilize your arm to its fullest extent to you know aim and have those sensitivities being used to the full potential then consider upgrading to a bigger mouse pad so take a look again my sense I, I like how fast it is i can do like really quick turns so normally with a lower sense like i would have to drag my arm all the way across if i wanted to like you know aim to the right side or something like that well, with a higher sense, I just have to do a little bit and I'm already like doing pretty good spins. And that's one of the things that I like about a higher sense. And that's why I chose it and raised it when playing Destiny 2. It just it just makes it a lot more chill to track opponents that are jumping up. You know what I mean? So you also have to consider space. All right. Now, I already have a lot of space, but I know not everybody can replicate it. My keyboard is to the left and I have uh, like a cup in front of me or something like that, the edge of the table. Now you might want to raise your sensitivity to make sure that you don't hit like things or fly your mouse off the table as often as you would if you had a lower sense. Because obviously if I'm running a low sense, that means I need to turn my mouse further, further, further to the right. Another little technique while we're on the whole subject about sensitivity is the lifting your mouse to continue dragging so that's something you want to try to practice um, i used to do it a lot but i kind of just got lazy over the times but it's pretty important if you can start practicing it it can help you out a ton so keep that in mind let's go ahead and move on to the next thing all right next up we're going to talk about my key binds so let's go ahead and scroll down to some of the things that are not so obvious and can be changed due to preference. I'll tell you why I went for the things I did. So first things first is auto melee. Now I have two options. One is on my mouse and the other one is actually my caps lock. So let's take a look in game and take a look at my hand as I'm grabbing the mouse. Now, one thing I realized in Destiny 2, you melee so much, it's like, you know a very very important part of the game and if you don't know how to melee like you are not going to be as good of a player as you could be now the problem i have with melee being binded to my mouse button is that it causes me to change my grip so if i'm in a gunfight and then i mouse click to try to like melee my grip slightly changes the way that i grab my mouse and then to return to that comfortable spot where i feel like i can grip my mouse perfectly to hit my shots it takes like a second right it's not that long but that grip change can affect your aim especially if you melee somebody there's somebody behind you you know that time to like readjust to grabbing your your mouse some things can go wrong there's a lot of error there so i wanted to try to bind it to something that i could press faster without all my mouse to like obscure my aim and um 
it was going to react very, very quickly. So I did a caps lock because I'm always pressing shift and that finger's kind of just chilling there anyways after like I'm done pressing shift. So what I did is put it on my caps lock so I can just use the finger that I used to press A to immediately press caps. You know what I mean? So gunfight, I can melee without ever changing my mouse grip. And that's kind of the idea that I have when I'm playing games is that the less things getting in my way when I'm playing and shooting, the better. Next up, let's take a look at light, oh no, hold versus toggle zoom. So on Destiny 2, it's an arena game, lots of fast pace. Please just go hold zoom, trust me on this. Toggle zoom would be more for like a very slow paced VR type of game. Hold zoom is the way to go. Let's keep going. Next thing we can talk about is hold sprint versus toggle sprint. So for many, many years, ever since I started playing uh, MNK, I always used hold sprint. But what I found is that I like sprinting a lot <laughs> when it comes to destiny. You're always sprinting. So it got pretty tiresome when I would press sprint and have to hold it the entire time. And there was also another thing that affects your gameplay and that's the ability to slide a lot more consistently thanks to the toggle sprint. So that's something to keep in mind. The toggle sprint will allow you to have less dead slides. While with hold sprint, I always experience a lot more dead slides. Uh, and that's one of the advantages that you have in game. Very, very easy to just do the constant slide. So if you're curious how somebody can just get so many slides without ever like, you know, getting that, that dead slide, then that's how you make it happen. Next up, let's take a look at my hold crouch and toggle crouch. So I have this on two options so that I can just decide what I want to do. Now you've seen plenty of people tee back shooting uh, in my gameplay. You probably don't see it as much, but I do use it as a tactic to try to avoid incoming, you know, sniper shots and whatnot. And it's just much easier to press it once and just let it go. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about pressing it again to uncrouch or pressing another key bind to, you know, uncrouch you. While with C crouch, I have to press sprint if I want to uncrouch. So that extra, you know, click on the key bind is just kind of time wasted. But I like having the option of being able to crouch so that I don't have to constantly hold and stretch my pinky. I know the control key is one of the hardest keys for people to use, myself included. But trust me, I practice made it hold crouch because that means I could just press it once. And at the same time, I'm stretching that finger, practicing it, making sure that, you know, my hand is you know, doing what it can and my pinky isn't just completely useless, right? So it, be, it makes you more familiar with the keyboard. Hold and crouch and then C to just toggle it. If I want to really stay behind cover, you know, it's a sweaty game 4-4. There's a super going on and I'm staying crouched. I'm waiting for people to, you know, make a move and then I can just get out. While with hold, I would just have to keep pressing control key and it just kind of gets tiresome. You know what I mean? So that's why I do both. Next up is my class ability. So I use the F key for my class ability. I like having abilities such as grenades, melees, everything close to my WASD keys. It's just much easier to stretch the fingers and press a button that you really want to use when you're playing the gameplay. It lets you react quickly. As if you had this key bind across the keyboard further away from you, you would have to make much more of an effort to reach it and then go back to the WASD keys. So the reason in here is just making sure that I can go back to using my movement keys without interruption from pressing like a class ability button. Next up, I have two binds here, air move. I have it for N and I also have it for scroll wheel down. This is if, you know, whatever way I want to react, if I want to press N while my thumb is on the keyboard uh, space bar, or I could just scroll down and activate my air move as the air move is usually something like a Phoenix dive or a shatter dive. And those things really help a ton. Next up is the interact key. This one is a little bit of a tricky one. I feel like it's not 100% the best position for a key bind, but it's definitely one of the better ones because um, I have control over W and S while pressing Q. That means that I can move forward, I can move backwards, and I can move right whenever I'm pressing Q to get power ammo or get a revive. 
So I like that because whenever I'm getting a res, I can still have a little bit of movement without worrying too much about being a stationary target. Now, some people are adjusted to using this on like a mouse button, which is really, really nice because then you don't lose any fingers on your WASD, which makes you a very, very difficult target to kill as you are resing. But Q is the one that I like. I got pretty comfortable with it. Any other keybind that you're using, like will still achieve the same effect where you have to let go of a WASD key. So if you really wanted to do something that doesn't like interrupt you from moving as you're resing, then your best bet would be on your mouse button. But then that goes back to the, you know, the points I made at the beginning where I don't want any buttons to throw up my aim uh, because you do have to shoot back sometimes as you are resing. Something to keep in mind. Next up is my grenade keybind. It is on E. So the same reasoning behind as to why I'm using the F keybind for the class ability. Not much else to say right there. The next keybind is the super one, which is on Z. In the past, I've had other keybinds, but I had issues pressing it correctly or not pressing it on accident. And I wanted to change it. I couldn't do the letter B and M anywhere down that area because sometimes I had to just kind of like guess that I'm pressing the right button. You know, your thumb isn't always relaxing on the space bar the exact same way. You know, sometimes you might tilt your keyboard a little bit different. So I went for one that was pretty consistent and that is the letter Z. So from A dropping down to Z was really easy for me to press and it's very, very, very effective. Next up is the stasis breakout. You know, you just go for whatever button you can press. Uh, as you're panicking and for me it's v next up is a tricky one so the kinetic weapon key binds a lot of people probably have one two three but i believe in the two three four so look at my fingers when i'm resting on the wasd it's really easy for my middle finger to quickly press two for my primary it's really easy for my index finger to press three right away and it's also really easy for the index finger to reach to the number four while pressing number one with the middle finger is quite difficult pressing number one with my ring finger is i have to like move my arm upwards to press that key bind or completely move my hand up which would kind of remove my fingers on the keys while with w my middle finger you can see my other two fingers stay on the key bind same with the index finger and these two I don't know if it's like a brain thing, but they seem to be like the most dominant, which you can control the best. Uh, it, it works nicely. I definitely recommend this, uh, especially for Destiny. You always want to switch to your energy weapon. So the quicker, the better. All right. So that does it for my keybinds. The uh, other stuff is kind of just preference, whatever you really want. We're going to go ahead and move over to my video settings. Let's take a look at the window mode. So you always want to make sure you run full screen. Borderless window is acceptable, but full screen is the way to go to make sure you can avoid any inconsistencies. What I know is that full screen allows you to get the most FPS possible out of your game and will help you avoid screen tears, uh, any little ugly things that you don't want when you're playing your game. Uh, resolution here is pretty much preference. I play 1080p, so don't worry if you're using 1080p monitors, you're not missing out if you don't have a 4K monitor. Um, while the extra resolution is pretty nice, makes your game look prettier, and it actually gives you a little bit of an advantage on how to like, properly, clearly see the game. 1080p is still the way to go, especially if you're trying to get the most FPS possible. And that applies to people that haven't upgraded to like the crazy graphics cards, all right? V-Sync, I wouldn't turn this on. I would just utilize the technology that your monitors have like G-Sync. Next up is the frame cap enabled. So I set this up to 200. Um, I hardly get over 200 and this really depends on your monitor. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky. Some people don't have their monitors that can push to 200 Hertz refresh rate. And that might sound a little bit confusing, but if you have a gaming monitor, you probably have a pretty high refresh rate and you can check that in your settings maybe google it to find out what refresh rate your monitor has and then you can adjust that according to the frame rate cap now out of the box some monitors say they have a certain refresh rate but it might not be enabled if you haven't checked the settings so i might be saving somebody here make sure that is set up some people sometimes Think they're playing at like let's say 144 hertz but in reality their monitor is at 60 and they have to change the setting now i believe in capping the frame rate to the refresh rate that you have on your monitor so mine being 200 i set up to 200. 
if I played on a 144 hertz monitor, honestly, I would cap it at 144. But if you can get more frames like consistently without getting like a lot of dips and stuff like that, then put it as high as it allows you to when uh, you don't see any crazy dips. You want to avoid those frame drop drips so you don't get any like crazy stutters. Next up is the field of view. So I would recommend going up to 105 and the lowest being 95 during that fov like you'll be okay i used to play a 95 i just recently raced it to 105 because i wanted to see more of the screen um it really doesn't matter i lied it actually does matter there's some play here with the field of view now the science behind it is that at 95 targets appear to be bigger like the hit boxes are bigger which would make it easier to hit shots on opponents while when you race it to 105 everything seems a little bit you know thinner on the screen which might make it more difficult for you to hit a target so definitely keep that in mind 95 bigger targets it's not completely noticeable but you know from experience from feeling out the game at 95 it felt like i had more space on the screen to shoot somebody while compared to 105 but 105 giving you that broader look at the game type of vibe does have its advantages as well while the 95 if somebody like slides across he jumps over you it could be a lot easier for you to lose them which is why the 105 has an advantage over that uh let's take a look at my brightness so brightness right now is sitting at five now these games always say like you want it to make sure it's barely visible but i like to go as you know kind of bright like not extremely maxed out bright but somewhere above the middle. I feel like that helps a lot with shadows and, you know, really push some of the dark stuff. But really when you want to make sure you look at is your monitor settings. Some people go way too bright and I feel like that's going to cause eye fatigueness. But that's okay if you can adjust your lighting in your room properly. But I also wouldn't want you to go too low because if it's too low, then kind of the quality of the image on your monitor goes downhill and it might not be as easy to see the targets on the screen. It might not be as visible as it would with more brightness. Let's take a look at my graphic settings. So some of these, I can't really explain why I chose, um, but it's mainly for quality reasons for an FPS increase and to not have little annoyances getting in the way of my gameplay so that I can properly see. I'll explain to you once I find an example. So anti-aliasing SMAA 3D here, 16X texture. I had the texture quality at the highest shadow quality at the lowest. I don't care about shadows. Um, I just feel like it's unnecessary to see shadows in this game. Depth of field, you really don't care about that either. You don't want that blur effect at all. You want everything to feel like clear, like you can actually see. Environmental detail distance. I mean, the crucible maps are basically sidearm range. So you really don't care about the environmental de detail distance. Maybe if you're playing this junction, you can put that on high, then enjoy it. <laughs> Character detail distance. Now, this one definitely put at high, so you can see the players clearly at a longer distance. Foliage detail distance, I don't care. Shadow distance, I don't really care. Light shafts, I do not care. Um, The game is really pretty, right? Destiny 2 is a beautiful game, and it does not require like crazy settings to be on the highest to be able to see how pretty Destiny 2 is motion blur do yourself a favor and turn it off you don't want any blur when you're turning around the screen you want everything to feel clear you want to be able to see properly wind impulse is just going to get in your way another thing that just kind of uh hinders your vision from being clear as you're playing the game so turn that off next up is sound so you and i might be able to see much here but i have my go xlr in front of me it's like a little mixer sound is really important when it comes to destiny i typically write like to put my destiny game sound at a higher volume than i normally would on other games because there's no sound cues in destiny but some of them are just really really low so the higher volume helps you pick them up helps you make sure you listen to certain abilities being procced um, you want to make sure you're paying attention to that balance it out correctly you don't want like your discord audio your music audio to be you know overpowering your game audio if it doesn't um suit it all right let's take a look at my gameplay settings here hud was only off because i was in a private match 
Uh, let's take a look at the colorblind mode. So there's two reasons why I run Protonopia. Number one is because, yes, I am colorblind, so I do need to run Protonopia. That is what, you know, my tests tell me and everything. But the other one gives you a nice little advantage in game that most people are not aware of. So let me show you in game real quick. All right. So I have the Protonopia colorblindness setting, but I want you to compare what it looks like when it's off versus when it's on. Now, as you can see on the radar, there is a red color shading on the top left. But for me, and maybe for you as well, it is very difficult to kind of just see it. It doesn't pop. It doesn't really catch your attention. Now, radar is very important in Destiny 2. One of the most important things in this game, especially when you're playing Crucible, very, very crucial. Reading the radar can help you be a much, much better player versus somebody that might be better than you, but don't read the radar. So you want to make sure that radar catches your attention, which is why a lot of players over the years have made this change because it gives you a quote unquote competitive advantage. Uh, now take a look at the difference. The radar color is just absolutely popping. It just calls your attention. It just lets you know there is danger. It's like, even when you're not focusing on the radar, that color, on the side of the corner of your monitor just catches your attention and calls for your eyes and you're like okay now i know there is a target that i need to worry about next up let's talk about reticle color you might think you have a lot of freedom here when it comes to color options you might choose your favorite one but i want to give a special shout out to one of my friends i met many many years ago when i was barely starting out on mnk called uh gilbert and he basically gave me a really good reason as to why i wouldn't just jump to like a badass color and that's because of the color distraction that can happen to your eyes so we just established what happens when you change a radar color to something that pops it just catches your attention and very much the same can happen on your hip fire reticle whenever you're playing the game so as a player, you want to make sure your eyes are scouting everything, right? You want to see left, right? You want to see details like potentially somebody peeking around a wall. You want to see the targets. And if you have the hip fire reticle constantly calling your attention, let's change it. If you have the reticle color just kind of popping like that, you are going to unconsciously uh, have your eyes directed to that reticle like even now myself i find myself like having a difficult time ignoring it it just pops and it calls for my attention to be honest I, I don't need my reticle to be that vibrant you know that explosive on the screen um although i don't mind with the radar but the hit fire yeah all right if you have a monitor that supports the nvidia control panel let's go ahead and take a look at these settings as well so earlier i told you about refresh rate and whatnot here's where you can change the refresh rate make sure your monitor is set to the right refresh rate and um, you might want to consider changing it if you can't get enough fps to support it so let's take a look at my color settings so everything is pretty much kind of like just standard there is one change i made when it comes to color settings and that is the digital vibrance I upped it up by five points just to make the game a little bit more colorful, have more color to things that might feel a little bit saturated. Now that can be something that you change on your monitor settings itself, but I'd rather just do it inside the control panel. And the G-Sync, you can activate this for full screen mode if you have it available. And that is pretty much it. Lastly, let's talk about those IRL settings that you can apply to make sure that everything is working fine for you you want to play the game so ergonomics very very important ergonomics are something that i am constantly changing and making sure that fits me so i am comfortable whenever i'm playing the game now let's take a look at my posture whenever i am putting my arms on the table you never want the edge of the table to be digging into your arms because that's just going to make it tough for you to like put your arm down likewise you don't want your arm to be like downwards angle because your chair is too high or something like that so feel free to adjust your chair or your table to feel like you have your arms relaxed on the table like you don't feel like you're constantly putting pressure on the table you don't feel like your arms are being pushed upwards towards your upper body just to be able to place them on the table you want them to be comfortable relaxed on the table 
so that you don't have any exhaustion, any issues with like, you know, numbness, tingles on your fingers, you know, a lot of like little health things that is very, very important. Now, you also want to make sure you have enough space on your table to get rid of any things that can get in the way. Like I told you before, getting a bigger mouse pad is very, very important. I run the Triple XL Glorious mouse pad. Um, I like the extra space so that I don't hit anything and I have all that freedom to move my arm around. Now, the next uh, IRL setting that you need to be applying is lighting. So you don't have to get any crazy studio lights like Elgato key lights like I would have in the back, you know, my hue lights and you know, my two lights here on the front of me. It could just be like your regular house light, maybe a lamp, but definitely consider getting a light to make your room a little bit brighter so that the you know the monitor brightness doesn't irritate your eyes as much i know many of us gamers like the dark cozy vibes with like no lights but it's very important to make sure you protect your eyesight that way you can play better if you can see better you play better you know we kind of talked a lot about making sure that the game is clear and you know you can see things so that's probably my final irl setting so I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a lot from Coach Bolt. <laughs> Let me know if you liked what I shared. Let me know if I helped you out. We're going to do more in the future, hopefully. And yeah, Coach Bolt out. Peace.